river in London, uh, for Christmas, then the tsunami that affected Sri Lanka um, happened on the 26th. And I was, I was really very, very, very devastated by, uh, shocked actually. And two days later, I wrote a song. That has generated a lot of interest. It has gone all over the world on the internet. Uh, it has been recorded by two uh, Sri Lankan Australians. Uh, it has been recorded by a Sri Lankan in Sinhala. Uh, the Sinhala version is by uh, Varadat uh, Arvind. And the uh, Australians were Rohan and um, Nalin Jayawardena. It was mentioned in the House of Commons also, my song in relationship to a racist song that was, that was aired in New York. How I got into music is really easy, easy um, to explain. Okay, ever since I can remember, I, I um, seem to have music in me all the time. I had um, formed a little group with uh, three other Sri Lankans. And this, um, it was in the Ceylon Student Center. I used to go there to play the piano, uh, to practice the piano. And uh, we were rehearsing this song of mine. And this girl came up, she was an uh, English girl uh, who had come there for dinner, and said, what's this song? Uh, I like this song. So I said, it's my own. And then she said, oh, uh, I'm a singer, and I'd like uh, my record producer to um, hear it. And they heard it, and it was uh, recorded by a guy called Dennis Preston. He was not that successful at that time uh, as a record producer, but he went on to be hugely, hugely successful. He uh, was uh, really the father of the traditional jazz revival in England. That was the first song, Kiss, Kiss, Kiss. People like uh, Livy Vijaymana, uh, Vernon Correa, Jimmy Barusha, these are the people who really uh, promoted my song. I went back to Sri Lanka, and uh, since the song had made it big in Sri Lanka, I started playing again with uh, Harold Senivratna and his brother, who was a drummer, and another bongo player, um, Adrian Feridans. We did a piece of music. Uh, of mine, which um, arranged it uh, with drums and piano, which was a slow train from Colombo to Candy, to based on that. And that became a very big success in Sri Lanka, called Candy and Express, Butterfly in the Rain. These were all done with Sri Lankan singers, and they all became a success in Sri Lanka. was living in London for eight years and that's the most productive period of my life which um, uh, started with uh, a, a number called Candy and Dance and this uh, was also a strange uh, luck that I had. I had an Italian friend of mine who we were walking down Piccadilly and he saw a successful singer called Joe Brown who was walking on the street, and I said, my goodness, you know, can't you go and ask him, ask him to hear some of my songs? So Aristide, this uh, friend of mine, he's very, very uh, Italian and very forward, you know, he chased him, went into a shop, and accosted him and said, listen to my friend's songs. <laughs> and Joe Brown was very nice. He said, uh, he gave his publisher's name, and said to contact him. So we went uh, to this publisher's office and I took a tape of mine uh, with Aristide. And I, I, I can't do all these things, what he did. He, uh, he was Italian and he had the spiel and you know, the, he got around the secretary. He in, in fact took her out for lunch and he said, put this tape on the top of the pile so that your boss can listen to it. 
and it happened that, that uh, 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 this publisher's name was Joe Ronk Roney. Mean, he was, he was, he was a, a really, he is the one who backed me fully in the, in the 60s. And I had a lot of success, uh, I mean, a lot of success with him. Not a lot of success with the songs, but uh, of course one uh, made it, you know, uh, we got a guest appearance in Top of the Pops. It was called Feel Like a Clown. And uh, really the first one that started was Canyon Dance, but Feel Like a Clown came later. Eight songs of mine were used by a folk group and uh, on an LP for Decca. And it was called Black Pearls and Green Diamonds. These were the two titles of two of my songs. And uh, that uh, uh, played out for about uh, you know, a year or so. And it wasn't a great success or anything. But very strangely enough, uh, after 36 years, uh, one of the members of the group I have kept up with him is uh, Martin Schoban. And he gets a call saying, uh, it's from a record company. And they said, do you know your your record is a collector's piece and it is selling for near, uh, for about three to four hundred pounds. In the 80s I, I went off music and I thought you know I'm getting a bit too old for jumping about on the stage and uh, went into video production with uh, my wife Ranjani and Paul Murray was uh, my son was uh, also about six or seven. We took him and we did a film a video documentary on VHS actually um, on the northeast of Sri Lanka, the problems with the ethnic uh, conflict. Even though it was VHS, was taken over by a distribution company here called Concord. And that led to various other uh, productions, but mainly focusing on the ethnic problem in Sri Lanka. We uh, did an interview of a, a woman called Manurani Saravanamuttu, which uh, was seen by Channel 4, and we got a commission for the South series. And we did a film called Shattered Pearl. Sri Lanka, our garden of Eden. Sinhala, Tano, Muslim and Burger, gentle people, torn apart in war. Sorrow and turmoil. And then we went on to make in two documentaries, one on South India, looking at the poor of South India in relationship to the poor of London. And also then uh, we did a film on women and water uh, uh, on Bangladesh. And now we want to set up a website and we are in touch with, um, the, with the person who uh, translated the tsunami song into Sinhalese. He is Dr. Vikum Pereira. The people of the country have suffered, and not only through war and now through uh, the tsunami, and the scientists say that it might happen again. Richard, there's a beautiful, beautiful line, uh, two lines in a very old folk song uh, called Bahama Lullaby. It says, um, if living is a thing that money could buy, the rich would live and the poor would die.
ಪಣಿನ <laughs> 